This is the notes for section 11 to multiplying polynomials. If you haven't done so already, make sure you pause the video at this time and read section 11 to before continuing on. So the first thing we want to do is we want to look at polynomials and classifying them. By classifying, we're saying different groups that we can, we can put them in. And one of the ways that we can do that is based on the number of terms that a polynomial has. So we call a polynomial a monomial if there's one term a binomial if there's two terms, and a trinomial if there's three terms. And then I have examples of each one of those here as well. As you can see, uh, uh, it doesn't matter um, how, many, how many variables are there, but is the terms, remember, are separated by a plus or a minus sign. Okay, So that's a diff some different ways that we can do that. Now, beyond a trinomial, Basically, we just would would refer to it as a polynomial. So those are the three that we we kind of give special names to. Okay. Now, when we take a polynomial in one variable and add it or multiply it by a polynomial in another variable, the result is a polynomial in several variables. Okay. So a polynomial does not have to have just one variable in it. It can have multiple variables in it, and that will occur if I if I take two of them and add them together or multiply them. Okay, So if I'm looking at the degree of a polynomial in terms of several variables, the, the, the thing that I'm looking for is the largest sum of the exponents. Okay? So as I look at the variables on each term, I'm going to add the powers of the exponents together to get the degree of that term, and then whatever the largest degree of any one term is, that represents the degree of that polynomial. So let's take a look at example one on your notes, and it says, first of all, classify the polynomial by the number of terms that it has. So as I look at that polynomial, remember each term is separated by a plus or minus sign, Therefore, since there is one, two, three terms, we would say this is a trinomial. And then part B says, what is the degree of that trinomial? Well, the degree, remember, is the sum of the, of the, of the exponents for all of the variables in any one term. So if I look at just this term, the sum there is 4. If I look at this term right here, the sum there is 3. And over here, 5 plus 2 the sum is 7. Therefore, the degree of this polynomial would be 7. One of the properties that we'll be working with in this section is the extended distributive property. And I have the extended distributive property right here. And I'm, I'm going to go through an example of this, and, and some of it was in your reading as well. But uh, the extended dis distributive property allows us to multiply polynomials together. And what it says is that if you have m terms or in, in one of the polynomials and n in the other to get the number of terms that you're going to have in your new polynomial I'm multiplying those values together. So for instance if I have a, if I have a polynomial with three terms times a polynomial with four terms there will actually be 12 terms in my new polynomial um, and and that's that that's in provided that we haven't combined like terms. When we combine like terms the number of terms will go down uh, if we can combine like terms. So for instance, if I, if I were to take 3x plus 2 times 5x squared plus 3x plus 1, I'm not going to multiply this together right now, but when I do, since there's two terms here and there are three terms here, my final answer will have a total of six terms before I combine like terms. At this time, if you haven't, you might want to review uh, example number one on page 739, and then I'll go through the extended uh, distributive property here in example two. So let's do example two here, where we're going to use the extended distributive property. And in the extended distributive property, we know since I'm taking three terms times two terms, I'm going to have a total of six terms before I combine like terms. However, to get those six terms, really what we're doing is we're multiplying every term in the first 
polynomial times every term in the second polynomial. So that's what I'm going to go through and do. So uh, I'm going to take and, and I'm going to go like this. I'm going to multiply these two together first, which would be 5x to the third power. Then I'm going to take this times this, which would be minus 35x squared. Now I'm going to take each of these times 4x. So I'd have x times negative 4x, which would be negative 4x squared. And then I'm going to have a negative 7 times 4x, which would be a positive 28x. And now I'm going to take both of these, the x and the negative 7 times 3. So I'm going to take x times 3, which would be 3x. And then I'm going to take a negative 7 times 3, which is a negative 21. Make sure that you're always, when you're doing that multiplication, you're always using the sign in front of the number as you're doing that multiplication. Now you'll notice that when I'm done, I have a total of six terms. Now I'm not completely done because I haven't put my answer in standard form, so I need to combine like terms and put them in descending order. So the 5x cubed, there isn't anything I can combine it with, and it is the highest power. I have a, um, I have a negative 35x squared and a negative 4x squared. If I put that together, that's going to be a negative 39x squared. I've got my x terms here, a 28x and a 3x, which is a 31x. And finally, I have minus 21. So now I have that in standard form, descending order, and I've kind of combined all my like terms. All right, this time you may want to stop the video and reread example number two on page 740 before continuing on. Uh, so I'm going to do example three. It kind of relates to that example two in your book. It says, find the volume of the large box by multiplying its dimensions. So we know that the volume of a box is equal to its length times its width times its height. Therefore, I can multiply it by a plus e times a plus b plus c times d. Okay. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply each term by every other term. So the easiest way to deal with that is let's take two of them and multiply them together first. Now since I have that just d, I'm going to, I'm going to multiply that. So if I, I, I apply my distributed property there, I'm going to leave the a plus e alone. And then I'm going to get ad plus bd plus cd. And now I have to take each one of, of a plus e times each one of these. So if I, if I do that, I have a squared d plus abd plus acd. So I've taken a times each one of these. Now I'm going to take each times each one of these. So I would have plus EAD plus EBD plus ECD. And you'll notice that in the end I have a total of six terms, which is what I should have since I took 2 times 3 times 1, which is equal to 6. Now I want to look and see if anything can be combined, and as I look at it, it doesn't look like it can combine any of them. Therefore, this is the volume through multiplication. So part B asks us to find the volume in a little different way. It says find the volume of each of the, the little boxes and add them together. Well, there are six little boxes on the bottom. Um, I can find each one of those. So this one right here would be a times a times d, or a squared d. This one here would be a times b times d, which would be abd. 
and this one right here, A times C times D. Okay. Now we're going to go to the top here. So this one would be E times A times D. And as you can see, it's matching up exactly with what we did for part A. And then here we have EBD. And finally, this last one would be E times C times D. Exactly what we got when we did the multiplication. So in part C, it just shows that they're the same. And, and as you can see, both A and B are exactly the same values. All right, let's take a look at this ex last example. It says a square piece of tin measuring 24 inches by 24 inches is to be folded into an open container after cutting squares of side length x from each corner. Let v of x be the volume of the box. Write a polynomial for the formula for the volume in terms of x in standard form. So let's draw a picture of what we have going on here. So if that's the case, I have this box. It's 24 by 24. This is my tin. And I'm going to cut the corners out so that each corner is x by x. Something like this. So this distance is 24, this distance is 24 here. Well I know that in general the volume is equal to the length times the width times the height. So if I do it in terms of v of x, the length would be 24 but then I'm cutting an x out here and an x here, so it'd be 24 minus 2x. The width would be the same thing, 24 minus 2x. And then the height of this box, since, since I'm going to fold these edges up at these corners, each, each, that height is going to be x. So there's my, my dimensions for that volume. Now I want to put that in standard form, so I need to expand that out. So I'm going to do it by using my FOIL method on this, or you can think about just using your um, um, uh, binomial square theorem. So you have the first number squared, which is 576, the last number squared, which is 4x squared, and then remember it's 2 times the first term times the second term, so that would be minus 48x. Okay? Now I have to take that still times x. Well, if I do that, I'm going to do it kind of in the reverse order so I can get it standard form. So I have a 4x squared times x, which would be 4x cubed. I have a, oh, I'm sorry, this middle term I have wrong. It shouldn't be minus 48x. It should be 96 because I have to multiply that by 2 there. So it should be minus 96x here. So uh, this would be, then here it would be minus 96x squared. And then I have a, 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 a x times 576 would be plus 576x. So I now have the, the volume here in standard form. Notice that they're in, the terms are in descending order by the exponents. So then part B asks us to find what is the maximum possible volume. To do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to take my, my uh, equation for the volume or the, the function for the volume and, and enter it in my graphing calculator and, and find where that maximum value is. Well, t if you think about it, I want to think about the window I'd be looking at. So my x value has to be somewhere between 0 and 12 because if, if my si each side length is 24, the most x value that I could cut out of each side would be 12. So, um, so I'm going to set up my window on my graphing calculator to be from 0 to 12. Okay? And then for my y max, I just picked like 2,000. You might want to play around with that a little bit. I don't know exactly what the max is, but I thought I would just put in a number high and just kind of see where it's at. If you find that your graph goes off the screen, you'd want to change that Y max. So if I go ahead and, and hit enter on that, and I've, I've graphed that function for me. So this is what it looks like. So I know that my max is coming somewhere in here. So let's go ahead and find that. So 
I'm going to go to menu or up to menu and then analyze and we want to find the maximum so it wants to know the maximum between where well I know it comes somewhere in this range so I'm going to click to the left of it and then we clicked over here to the right of it and there's that value so it occurs when X is 4 and at that value um, it's giving me a not a very nice I'm going to change the attributes on that so if I do that it's at the point 4 1024 so that would be the answer to our question so as we look at that what is the maximum possible volume that would occur when X is 4 so the V of 4 is where we're going to get our maximum possible ma maximum volume um, which is going to be 1024 and that would be in terms of um, we're working with the inches so it would be 1024 cubic inches for that value. <laughs>